Testing, testing, one, two, three. Since a lot of the focus is on the Cayuta Nebula and the Vindicator, we figured, well, why not? push the button already i'm starting early today that's right like 30 seconds early welcome to the rockfish streams ladies and gentlemen i am your host and your guide eric schrader the community ambassador for rockfish games and uh today we're going to be going through a bit of the hotfix talking about some of the elements that changed there as well as you know just hanging out with y'all it should be a good day it should be a delightfully pleasant experience we will be picking up the storyline where we left off in the Kite Nebula, which in the Discord message, I said it was like right before we we just got to Kala's shipwreck. So we're gonna be going in, jumping right through that uh, pretty immediately. I already see a question. I wanna answer this very quickly so everybody knows. The question is regarding uh, the crafting system as it is now. And we have actually already spoken towards the crafting system. So for anybody who's missed it, I think this individual maybe missed it. Um, there are absolutely plans to change that crafting system, as well as how rolls occur, as well as other modifiers, as well as, uh, as Hans Christian put it last time, uh, incorporating runes. So there are going to be a number of elements that are adjusted, added, and uh, possibly taken away from the crafting system as a whole. It's going to be very different. All right. So Michael says that he's going to be uh, AFK most of the time. So I'm going to be revealing all of the secrets and he's not going to be any wiser about it. So that's good. That's good. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we should have a good time. Oh, also, we're going to do your screenshots and fan art because we haven't done that in a couple of uh, couple days, a couple, couple weeks. And there's been some cool stuff from you guys. Like, holy cow. So we're going to highlight that a bit. That should be great. Uh, and uh, yeah, so let's just get into it. Uh, yeah, right here. I think we literally saved right in front of the gap for the drone. I, I know that I did because I checked the VOD uh, just to make sure. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. So we are we are literally right outside this hole uh, where we need, we need to search the shipwreck. Um, some individuals got clever and creative with the drone, by the way, and we have... Uh, <laughs> We have a bug on our hands. Don't you worry about that. I'm sure somebody out there wants to point it out. Uh, you can actually fly the drone about freely if you would like. Uh, 
that's not going to happen in the future. So uh, enjoy that while you can. <laughs> you guys. Um, and also, I just want to express my gratitude in particular. Just combing through your comments, your feedback, your criticisms, and seeing the videos you pump out. And you're like, is this supposed to happen? And just put out there like a, a, an image of the Redeemer's big old vessel spiraling out of control, flying across the stars with a smoke line that makes no sense. I love that stuff. I absolutely love you guys for everything and anything that you are breaking the game with. Keep doing it. It's helping us make a better game experience for everybody. Whether that means we take a bug and make it a feature or iron things out to make the game just better for everyone, you know. So don't stop being awesome in that regard. Very, very good stuff. All right. So one of the very first things just to point out from the hotfix, um, for any of those who have missed it, haven't downloaded the game yet, we updated the look of the drones. A very subtle change, and by subtle I mean it's a completely different model. <laughs> but we did this to match the player ship's uh, aesthetic a bit more. Originally, the, 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 the prior design uh, was very thin, it was kind of stretched out, uh, it looked like it was a piece of junk, and some of you guys liked it out there. Some of you guys appreciated that form, because, I mean, it is getting made from scrap metal. But we felt like we wanted to gamify this a little bit more and make it a cohesive whole with the player ship, as opposed to making it realistically built out of junk. So that's the change here. Um, they also do have engine trails, so let me go ahead and just boost over here real briefly. And uh, I think that should, that should, yeah, there we go. So they got these nice little engine trails too. So working engines and everything. They're pleasant little dudes, flying little lovelies, as we say. We're pretty happy with the end result. Um, also, for anybody who's kind of wondering, like, because I know you're you're thinking about it already. I know you are. You're looking at the ship colors going, well, wait a second. My ship isn't orange and white and gray, and it doesn't use a blue light on it, and my engine isn't green. How come all of those things are different from my ship? I want it to look exactly the same. So I will say this, we would love to add additional features like that to the drones as well, but we do have to be careful in that sense because now we're looking at making just the Vindicator more complex of a ship than the other ones just through aesthetics alone. I know it sounds like kind of silly, kind of crazy, but we're being very careful with making sure each of the ships have their own specific direction that they are taken, yes, but we want it to be balanced with the other ships as well. So while I cannot guarantee we will make any sort of ship coloration adjustments for the drones to be paired with them, I will say that you guys have sent that feedback to us. We have received it. We'll see if it works or not if we have time. It's not a priority whatsoever. Okay, so note that if we were to do something on that side of things, that would be far later in development. Cool. All right, so now let's go ahead and start our way into the pit by deploying another drone. Can't have too many dro uh, drones in the Vindicator, right? If it looks like a piece of junk, it's actually camouflage. Oh my gosh, you guys. All right, so in this mission, we're doing a, a very limited number of things here. Mo mostly we are trying to navigate around all of these electrical fields. We went from one room to another one. And Can't you tell us anything more? Actually, hang on a second. I'm going to disable the text-to-speech. So it'll show up on screen. If you guys want to read that, you can. What am I looking for? I must find way home. Yeah, we got that part. My ship has power to make rip, rip in space. It'll deactivate next time. Rip. Now, that is interesting. This sounds to me like something worth following up. Excellent. Well, that's a shame because time's up. I got a job to do, and so do you, Adam. Enough of this wild goose chase, and let's get back to business. I can't actually remember if I'm required to restart the game now I disabled that, but whatever. Uh, 
what I do know I have to do is get this little thing all the way through this uh, tight corridor. So unstable power cores, as many of you know, they will explode when they are hit by any sort of damage. So here's just a, a light little puzzle for you to figure out. Nothing super crazy, but does require you to use your brain. And now we have to destroy this shield generator, right? So we see that this is moving. So what we're gonna try and do here is let go of the unstable power core. Oh, come on, right that. Ah, dang, it didn't, it didn't explode. All right, we gotta try again. So what we're doing here is we're trying to get, come here you. We're trying to get this unstable power core enough speed to go destroy that shield generator. There we go. Just like that. So using an unstable power core in a very different way here than you normally would, because I think a lot of you guys probably saw the unstable power core and you're like, oh, I have to plug it into something. Remember, they can also be used as a bomb. And for anybody wondering, now that shield is down because we destroyed the shield generator, then we would have to destroy this little gap, all that type of stuff. And now we can bring an unstable power core in here to power the socket. Look at that. I'm giving you all the deets of how to do the game, but I do hope you're using your noggin in a way that you're not straight going to the forums after five seconds going, I don't know how to do this. Puzzles are dumb. Oh snap, I just called some of you out. And I, I mean every single word of that, all right? Try, put in some effort, please. Goodness. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I may or may not have watched a couple of your streams. I know some of you who don't try at all. Come on, it's not that hard. Hang on a second, I'm just gonna drink some of these tears. Uh, one second. Mm. Oh! Really salty, all right. Anyway, so now we've got through here. We are gonna go ahead and grab this energy sphere socket, or we have to get the stuff for the energy sphere socket, so we gotta look around. Do a little look-sees, roundsies. Because clearly there's something in this space. It's a very massive vessel from Kala. And we have to figure out how to get this thing back online whatsoever. I think this is also kind of a fun little space right here. I don't think very many individuals have tried this. If you haven't, there's some crazy distortion effects in this space. We might actually die. Uh, ooh, a ship color, nice. And of course I'm getting the audio, audio uh, blips and issues. Uh, that was actually part of the hotfix. We've gone through and tried to tweak how the sounds are coming through the game. Uh, and so you're sometimes gonna get these little blips, what you're hearing here. Unfortunately, it's still a work in progress. Also, all my drones, oh my gosh, my poor drones. In retrospect, not a smart move. <laughs> Yikes. But uh, I guess I deserve it. Someone thinks I deserve it. So very well, I accept. Thankfully, we've got a lot of wreckage in this area, so we can pop those drones right back up. Uh, but what we do need to do is figure out how to get the uh, respective components for this ship back online. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to put a piece of debris right there so that I can eject this power core dispenser without it blowing up. Without it blowing up. You wait right there. Perfect. Fantastic. Now you come here. Excellent. And here's an energy sphere dispenser. Oh my goodness. Wonderful. And now we have to hightail it over to the other location. Now, we don't have enough time to make it. But did you know, at electrical sources, they will recharge energy spheres? So even if we didn't quite have enough here, we could fly into this. Whoops. 
not literally, but if we fly into this like this, it recharges the energy sphere so we have more time. And now we can start plugging in the energy sphere. Oh man, we need to change out our weapons. We do not have good weapons for this. We also need to, we also need to get our drones back. Oh man, I feel so bad about the drones, honestly. I feel so bad about the drones. All right, hang on. I gotta I gotta check the chat for all my savagery earlier. I'll make sure that every, everything's good. Deshra says, I've been stuck for months on puzzles and other games. I ended up getting it without help. It's worth working on, working it out. Yeah, honestly, like we, like one of the mentalities we had when we were crafting any sort of puzzle in the game is let's make sure the complexity of the puzzle is simplified. Let's make sure that since we're using handcrafted locations to guide the player to the solution, right? Whether that's through understanding of its mechanics, like an unstable power core explodes, or something far more simplified where it's like um, a power source with cables is probably going to another power source uh, that it's required to work with, right? So following cables, we talked about that last stream. That's gonna be a huge clue for anybody who's struggling with puzzles at all. And then also just knowing how you can use tools in other ways is gonna help uh, a lot in that regard as well. We might have some difficult puzzles and later systems and whatnot. Um, but I think at that point in time, if you're devoted to the cause and you enjoy that type of stuff, you will be able to experience that to your liking if you desire it. Or if you completely hate puzzles forever, nah, you can avoid it. So we'll see how things continue to go. Excellent. The no puzzle solving crowd thinks you deserve it in regards to um, all my drones getting lost. Ouch. Probably though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Why are there no distress calls in Kite? Because there are no GMB forces here. They would not be calling in for um, distress. And we also know that the scientists in the area, if they were to put up distress calls, then the redeemers would show up and either convert them or annihilate them. And they don't want that to happen either. So basically, nobody is traveling through this region of space. And the people that are know not to use distress calls. <laughs> so that's why uh, that's why we don't do that. All right. So now we took this thing out. We're gonna go over here, shoot the button. Mm. I mean, I like the area of effect here that could that benefits my drones. Dem rocket launchers though, 20% chance to disable the target's shield. So I could just blast a target with a lot of shields and probably get away with dropping it since you can fire five rockets in pretty quick succession. That's pretty good. And then nanoplating, which is equal to ours, except its stats are a little bit worse. And then what else do we get? Tychion emitter? I can't even remember. That's fine. Cool. So Adam now is saying that we got something, but we need other things. We found a piece to a larger key sort of thing. We got more company. Let's start getting some of our drones back actually. So we'll just kind of fly through the wreckage and I'm sure we'll find enough debris to get most of our drones back, if not all. Our drones are so cute. Wow, that wreckage spawned way over there. Okay, that's fine. It's five, one more. 
one more and maybe some change to repair our drone that's on negative one hit points? Maybe? That's fine. We'll go with we'll go with four effective drones, because that one he's gonna die instantly, and that's fine. That's fine. Maybe we should have the text to speech on. I I never know what's best for you guys. I don't know. Let's let's turn it back on. I think I got a little ahead of myself. I just don't want to be talked over, you know? Nobody likes that during a presentation, which effectively these streams are a presentation, right? But basically these people are saying, uh, yeah, so I come here to scavenge stuff all the time, but then the warp gate was closed and so I haven't been here, uh, but I recognize that the warp gate opened back up, so now I'm here again and I'm grabbing all the things and we're like, oh, well that's, that's nice, married to Vince, but uh, you probably shouldn't be here and we're, we're doing some stuff ourselves. Uh, there's the abridged version. Excellent. <laughs> so we're gonna go talk to Marie Devint. Say, do you happen to know a Bram Devint from Cephas Downs? Ha! Huh. If I hadn't been married to that bastard, I'd still know that name as belonging to the worst winemaker in the galaxy. He made it common knowledge that grapes grown on Cephas result in nothing more than glorified laxative. This is a side How quest. What's that fool doing? Uh, I'm afraid he's dead. Oops. What? What happened? Uh, I don't know exactly, but it seems he got lost in the caves underneath Cephas Downs. His ship had these bottles stored and this message for you. Oh, that bloody fool. He ran off because he wanted to teach the universe the joys of a heavily touched palate but ended up dying for a shipload of sweetened vinegar. Here, I'll buy the whole load from you. That's a lot of credits. Well, lucky you. Now use it to buy something or leave. I need to pour myself a drink. Dang. So what's all this about? <laughs> we have a colleague whose ship this was. She needs some of the parts which are missing. <laughs> well, that's hard to believe, Adam. That wreck, wherever it's from, is old as dirt which would make it open to common salvage law and your friend a fossil. Isn't early access fun? Don't you guys just love the the super crazy awkward transitions? She just went from, oh my gosh, I need to pour myself a drink to now I'm speaking like a robot. Welcome. Oh my goodness. Intense. Acting got worse again, pretty <laughs> frog, oh my gosh got worse is an interesting way of putting we now have placeholder text to speech until we have the voice lines recorded again but that's fine that's fine let's keep going i'm sure you're mistaken i mean sure it's of a very strange alien race we're not sure of yet but look we just need these parts so we can be on our way i don't have much i used to come here way back when the frontier first opened up so i got some early pickings some charred blocks with the semblance of some kind of old alien design. Quite useless. Here, Excellent. I kept one specimen. You can see what I mean. You can have that. Thanks. Don't mention it. The rest I sold where I could. Makes and sense. And bootlegger took some historic interest, so I sold one to him, and I peddled another piece to G and B like it were a magic bean. Suckers. I also saw some outlaws peeking over the place who took off with a significant looking piece. I can give you their general location. Thanks, Marie. I appreciate the information. Say nothing of it. You did me a good turn. I do your one back. Man, there's so many people out there who have been like, yeah, the text of speech is placeholder, but could we actually have it in the game at full release, please? Guys, oh my goodness. You're weird, but we love you. I'm gonna just say that, that we'll probably have some sort of mode or option in there to turn it back on. But guys, we, like, we, we're paying individuals to voice the game for a reason, okay? Like we, we don't want it to sound like that. You crazy, okay? <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> Still, we love you for it. You guys are, are awesome. All right, so we're gonna repair our ship. Um, I did see a question earlier, and I want to I want to address this for everybody who's here. So, uh, Stig three, 
uh, says, you told the community earlier that starting over will lead to a better experience. Is that still true for every update or can I focus on my build right now? So uh, yeah, it's still true, Stig. Um, but okay, let me, let me just quickly explain this, all right? Early access game is not done. It's not done. You know that. Everybody knows that. When a new game is started, that means any of those improper flags or elements that were there but then were removed or elements that uh, were passed along the way but then were updated, that uh, means all of that stuff is going to start fresh and clean from a new save. So if you are gung-ho about providing feedback, suggestions, criticizing the game on how everything's coming together, then starting from scratch to experience the game through the content the way it's intended is the best way to do it, hands down. If you're approaching early access more as a, I wanna see what's new and get into that as quickly as possible, or I don't have as much time and I only have like 30 minutes a day or you know, whatever. If you have a particular situation that you feel you need to continue your save file, we are carrying over saves as much as possible so that you can keep from having to restart there as well. Just note that if you are using a save from a previous update, there could be bugs that happen in, like just because it's from your save, not actually from the game itself, if that makes any sense. Now we're trying to avoid those because, you know, if we start getting a bunch of bugs report on the forum that are from an old save file, well, that's a problem. And then we might have to hit the good old reset button. Uh, but we are trying to withhold that for as long as possible so that you can all dive into the new content quickly to digest that as soon as possible without having to restart every single time, which I can totally understand is a lot for some individuals. Still, that's the best way to play test. It's the best way to leave feedback is from that initial wipe. So that's why we strongly encourage it, but you don't have to. You don't have to. There will absolutely be a wipe in the future though. There will absolutely 100% guaranteed be a wipe that happens inevitably. And this will probably happen close to or around the 1.0 release. Just wanna be super clear about that because so much has changed from the, the start of early access even to now that if somebody had carried over a save from then, they'd probably have some weird stuff happening. And we don't wanna have anything from any of these wild saves from any of these versions be carried over to present insane problems or whatever for you, for us. Nobody deserves that, which is why we will just clean slate wipe it so everyone starts at the very beginning to play the game when it is released. So for all intents and purposes, Recognize that right now, the saves that you're using are testing. That's what they are. So thank you for your patronage. Thank you for your feedback. Thank you for your support to help make this game the best it can possibly be. Woo! All right. Will there be a experimental at 1.0 or just a 1.0 start? Uh, Flory, if we do an experimental at 1.0 start, um, it would not have all of the content of the game yet. So would it actually be an experiment? I don't think we're gonna do that. <laughs> I think there's gonna be a pretty decent transition from the prior patch to 1.0 where 1.0 is going to drop a ton of stuff and then we will bug test accordingly from 1.0 if needed. Uh, but obviously we are going to do our due diligence to sweep that thing as clean as possible uh, when we push that button. There's inevitably gonna be a hot fix, who am I kidding? Like every single freaking game that has showed up in like the last five years gets a hot fix after like the first week of release. But uh, you know, there you go. All right. Uh, so now we spoke, we have to find these keys. Um, so this is a spatial bypass component. A strangely advanced yet also dated piece of otherworldly technology. Mm. We gotta go find lots of them. 
Uh, otherwise, let's see if there's anything we can buy. Ooh, do we have the corrosion detector? We do now. Excellent. And I'm going to sell some stuff. I think I'm going to sell these. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and sell these because I need the monies. Um, and then also Atheum Power Cell Super Gel. I want all of that. Thank you. We'll take the wiring kit too. Um, but we want to dump all of that in there. Where's the wiring kit go? Oh, we have scrap metal? Wonderful. Wiring kits, beautiful. Scrap metal, excellent. All right. We will also sell this. Man, I'm such a hoarder. I don't want to. I don't want to get rid of any of this stuff. I should probably prioritize this. We need power unit HX ones. So that way I can send my stuff straight to the home base without even having to go back. Will there be a way to get new ships after the reset to test them out without the grinding? Um, so basically, when we launch the next ship, we're going to be done with player ships. Uh, we have eight out of nine of the player ships um, launched. And then from there, it's going to be play testing to get those ironed out before the 1.0 release. We'll have like a year to get all of that stuff figured out. If we can't figure that out in like a year, I mean, we're doing something wrong, right? So, uh, Gordon Lynn, that won't be an effect of a reset. Reset will happen after. All right. Love the game. Great work, guys. Thank you. Appreciate that. Are Mac and Linux versions expected to be released at the same time as 1.0? Yes, that is correct. And it will be a native Linux version. Um, so yeah, Mac and Linux 1.0. What type of ship is next? A light fighter is next. Can I get a quick view of the rear of the Vindicator? I maybe judged you a little bit there, but hey, okay. here it is. Here's that Vindicator rear. Just for you, sir. Woo! Also, what is this? What is this? How dare you enter the stream? Did I say that you could be here? No. How dare this chair? Look at this chair. See this chair? He thought he'd be sneaky. Nope. He's gone. But there's your Vindicator rear, just for you. Do with it what you will. Can you identify this object? Yes. This is part of thing we need. We need other things. You're saying that this thing works. It looks extremely antiquated. No. It works. It fit with other things too. Power. It is unfortunate that I did not have the time to teach Kala the entire lexicon of our technological terminology without many of the visual references at hand on our planetoid oasis. It's only to be expected, Edwardo. However, what I believe Kala is intimating is that her technology functions in a way we do not understand. Man, Eduardo, Eduardo man. Well, His words. I really think there's something to this, and I'm going to track down the missing parts for Kala. I'd like you to go back to base while I sort this out. Maddox, please bring Ala and Eduardo back to base. I won't take long. Look at this guy! Maddox, let's keep the city. You don't see that every day. All right. Well, now that we know we have to go find more of these pieces, we are going to fly on out of here and do so. Cargo shipping intensifies. Oh my gosh. This new <laughs> is so oh my gosh. You guys are ridiculous. I love you. Don't change. None of you change. Of completely unknown technology cannot be guaranteed <laughs> to provide satisfactory results. All the same. Hi. I'm going to follow my feeling on this one. All right. I see it. I see the question coming up so much. Uh, individuals are are asking roadmap 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 I see it on twitch I see it on YouTube it's probably even on Steam um, so let me just uh, make this statement super duper transparent and clear all right like so right now 
all we have said for our 2022 roadmap, which we are working on, is that there will be another system in the spring of next year. We will have the light fighter, the new, the last player ship ready for next year, uh, for spring. We will have UI and text language support in German, French, Italian, Spanish, Brazilian, Portuguese, Polish, Czech, 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 Russian, Simple Flight, Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Please make fun of my pronunciations. Uh, there will also be in-game content sneak peek, and there's going to be a lot more to be revealed. That's what's on our roadmap thus far in 2022. Thus far. Because we're still ironing out what that looks like. Um, several of you may not know this, but we had made a partnership with Microsoft. Uh, so before anyone freaks out and like, what? You sold your souls? No, no, calm down, everybody. We have all creative freedoms still applicable to us. None were given away. Uh, what this partnership uh, allows us to do is have us available on the Game Pass, which many of you have been diving into. So awesome there, awesome, great news. More player base, more feedback, that's good. And then we also got a financial boon to keep the lights on, to keep making sure everything is ironed out. The quality of the game is going to get right where we need it to be. Uh, because prior to this, prior to this deal, we were kind of hesitant on what needed to be cut. We were getting hesitant on where we needed to reprioritize things. So we extended our deadline for the game. So it's now 2023 for the full release. Uh, the financial backing means that the quality of what we're aiming for will be hit. And it also means that we have a larger player base to all come together and try the game out with. Roadmap for 3000. Uh, me D B D B E D. I think you're thinking of another game that ends in citizen and starts with star. I assure you, if we have any other changes, we will let you know. Oh, is that too direct? Oh, my bad. I'm getting, I'm actually getting the finger waved at me. My bad. All right. Anyway. <laughs> All right, let's keep playing this game. Okay, can I just be clear? Look, I'll be clear here. We make fun of because we love. If you guys didn't think we didn't enjoy Star Citizen for any reason whatsoever, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say to you because we love space games. We, lo we, love, we love space games. That's who we are. That's why we're making one. <laughs> we kid because we love. Though we do hope that it releases sometime in the next 100 years. Uh, anyway, this is an Everspace 2 stream, guys. <laughs> Ooh. All right, here we go. Redeemer drones. One more for ourselves. Good. Oh, I don't like that Crusader. He's taking out our drones. Oh, we got salvage from a destroyed drone. Oh, that's huge. That's, that's not common, but when it happens, it feels good. Another wreck. Oh my goodness. Oh, they weren't close enough. Our drones are taking a lot of damage. If my ult was charged, I would have a solution for all of this, but. I have to keep being a tryhard. Oh boy. As if I don't have enough to deal with already. Adam being accurate right there. All right, hang on. So remember that place that we uh, opened up, that ancient citadel? All right, here we go. Here we go, let's have some fun. Get all our drones back. Oh, don't go away, come back. I wanna play. So all our drones are invulnerable to damage while we do this. And then we lose the extra ones from our uh, from our ultimate. You don't keep those. But the remaining ones do get healed. Now, I'd actually like this guy to shoot at me instead. I wonder if I can get close enough here to... Uh... No, he's, he's boosting away. Well, it's not necessary we get this kill. That's fine. Oh, we, we took more damage there than I thought we were going to. 
Almost, almost. Don't change course. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so we have three out of six of our drones. Maybe see if we can get some more scrap or something here to, or salvage rather. And then we'll answer a couple more questions and engage with you guys. Oh man, I'm having fun today. All right, a couple more redeemers. Jellies. Oh, I don't want to take my drones over there. They'll all die. Oh, so tricky. There we go. All right. That should help out a ton. Cool. Last guy. Much better. All right. So our drones are looking good. It looks like we're going to need some new thrusters soon. This might not be a bad option, actually. I think we're going to go to the Goss Cannon for now. Might be a solution to some of our issues. Yeah. Ooh. Oh my goodness. More punks on the other side? Gosh. Constant. Let's try and do something about this guy. Stack some serious corrosion. I don't even want to mess with the drones. I'm being lazy. But the great thing about drone carriers is that they are an absolute beautiful source for more Vindicator drones. Even though all of our drones are dead, look at look at how much wreckage is around this because of all their drones. So we're gonna pop all of our drones up instantaneously, look at that. Then we're gonna get a heal in for our weak guy. Oh yeah. Now things are looking good much better we can also continue to heal with some more wreckage over here we just have one guy who's weak but let's try and get him at full health beautiful that makes me feel so much better all right where do we need to go oh yes oh yes the undiscovered site i think we'll have some fun at this site We gotta go here first. We've got a lot of different locations that we have to go to, which is why our indicators weren't giving us the full information and also why we have two orange locations. Goss cannons are OP. Ah, if you use them right, they absolutely should be. Yeah. Do we have a different secondary? We do. Ugh, ugh. Keep yeah. talking about your little side expedition for. What is it, things? Carla has some knowledge available. All right, we're gonna and I think we could use the have some issues here, probably. Here we go. How long do you think this will take? Hang on a second. I just arrived at an outlaw hideout where one of the pieces of the puzzle is meant to be. Hey, you outlaws, listen up. You have something I want, and you are going to be over now, or I blow your face to bits. Who the hell are you? What have we ever done to you? I'm going good, to good, count good. 10, 6, 7. What happened to 1 to 5? 
eight, nine, ten. Anyway, Amelia, I figured there's no point in negotiating, so I'm going with guns later. Do what we must. Just stop tuning around and try to get back here before we have a fist fight on base. Please. Ouch. I'll try to speed this up. Promise. All our drones got destroyed by that. Way too close to those mines, gotta be careful. But we got the wreckage to bring them all back, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's get this elite down first. Excellent. Much better. One quick repair, and then let's assault this base. Oh no, I hear, uh, I hear some explodies. I'm glad the drones are fighting the enemies while I'm, uh, you know, picking off the easily hittable locations on the base. Let's see if we can keep our drones alive a little bit longer. Wonderful. Yeah, so anybody asking about the, the OST, we are absolutely going to have an OST. Oh, oh, fun fact. So check this out. So you know the barrels, you are supposed to throw those back at the shields because you need a large physical object to hit the shield to disable it. Don't say we're not consistent. <laughs> we're adding new little tricks here and there for uh, what you can do against your opponents. We don't want it to be like, oh, you have to do this very specific uh, single thing in order to do uh, a thing, you know, whatever. That was so, that was too vague. But you guys get what I'm saying. We want there to be a little bit of diversity in your options and how it all comes together. Beautiful. I am a large physical object, yeah, basically. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna need to watch my drones again. They're kind of getting uh, a bit damaged up. Oh, sweet. Now we can just uh, make sure they don't die. And we'll focus fire this turret down. Wonderful. Now, my ultimate um, is giving me an additional benefit. Uh, one of the perks that I have is that it will give my... Oh, wow. I got that destroyed in my hands. Um, my drones will get fully healed whenever I use my ult. That's one of the passives I have on my Vindicator. So that's why I popped it right there, because they were kind of getting a little bit weak, and I didn't want them to die. I like them. Okay, good, good. Oh, and of course, we have a sound issue where when you're holding an object that gets destroyed, that it can actually carry over the sound. This is a bug we know about. If you guys experience this too, this is something that will be fixed. We, we will have to deal with it for the time being in this location, unfortunately. I'm, 
just abusing this now. Oh my goodness. Anyway. I'm being impatient is what I'm doing. <laughs> all right. So we got all our drones back up. We are still missing some fuel tanks. So now we actually have to use our eyes and look around. Can't just follow the markers. So let's do that. So first we've got this guy in there. Oh, that's not, that's, this is a secret. So we don't have to get that, but we do need to get the fuel tanks. Let's go ahead and grab this container, nanobots. Uh, we'll go ahead and stack that. That's good. What else we have? Oh, I think we'll take the EMP missiles. That should be much better. We'll go ahead and dismantle these since they're empty anyway. Um, that's huge. Absolutely take that, no problem. Mm, not quite. Yes, thank you. Oh my goodness. Some lovely little upgrades that we just procured there. Um, all right. Now we need to find the rest of the fuel tanks and we'll be on our way with this mission. Whoop, up, up. That's what I get for turning my inertia dampeners off. Any in here? Did I destroy the ones over here? I didn't think I did yet. I guess I did. But we will go ahead and grab this bulletproof container. I'm really hunting for a better energy core, but uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. All right, and now we go down here. Here we are. going to be on the other side of the base if I'm not mistaken. So we will fly through this cool little bit of scenery. Wait, did I just see something? Nope. Okay, we're good. For some Athium Crystal Shards for my perks, which I'd very much like to pick up. Wonderful. That was a lot. That feels real good. All right, let's see what we can do there. Um, tractor beam, yes! Oh my gosh, we just need super gel, guys. Oh my gosh. I don't know about you all, but like the tractor beam is like the first thing that I try to level up just because of that sheer convenience factor. It's, it's delightful. It is rather delightful. Well, let's see if we can find the rest of these uh, elements on this station. Without too much time wasted. There they are. No, that's only two of them! Oh no, okay, that's all three. Okay, I was about to be really upset there. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. I know how this works. Much better, much better. And I'm just gonna go straight for the core itself. I'm not even gonna worry about the turrets. It appears that the outlaw station has jettisoned its entire inventory. Let's take a little look around for what we need. Excellent got what I was looking for. It took longer than I expected. Maddox will be furious. I thought furious was Maddox default mode. All right, so now we head on to the next location.
I see a little bit of a discussion on the set items. Um, and so some people were asking like, well, we got the one blood star uh, like way back in what was it? The union update or something? Why haven't we seen more of those? Where are they at? Are we done? We're just doing one set item? No, 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 of course. We're not doing just one set item. There are absolutely more coming. Uh, the Bloodstar set was a little bit of a trial by fire for us, making sure that it was working as intended. And uh, long story short, it kind of is. So when we approach set items, which will likely be added in the next update, oh, I've said too much. Um, then you'll see a little bit more how we're managing that, bringing it all together, uh, and delivering a fine product to you all. All right. So let's head on through to Union. No sniper drone. No, no, no. No, no, no. There we go. That's fine. He could just like pop my drones. I, I wanted none of that. Oh no! Not a demolisher. He can also hurt my drones real bad. Don't you do it. There we go. Oh, ouch. That was painful. But we got the heal. That's what we needed. We'll take it. The leaker. Oh, gosh, no. Don't. I don't want that. Don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is the blood start set worth it? Uh, that's a question you guys can ask around. I would love to hear what you guys think of the Bloodstar set. Do you think it's valuable? Do you think it's worthless? Do you think that it adds a specific style of play that you, it, you wouldn't have been encouraged to do before? Do the Harvester? Oh, the Harvester. Uh, that's not in this location though. It's in the other one, isn't it? I could go to the harvester though. I do want to heal my drones up. Um, let's see, the harvester's over here, right? Did I already do it? It says it's marked off my list. Hang on, let's go, let's, let's do a, a quick sidetrack. What's my personal favorite ship class? That changes uh, based on what we're doing to the ships. <laughs> um, for a for Everspace One, my favorite ship class is the Scout, hands down, no questions asked. It's the best, better than all the rest, uh, and you can't challenge me. That's done. All right. With Everspace Two, um, from our starter ships, the medium ship classes. Um, I found myself playing the Sentinel for a very long time until we started adding more unique attributes to the ships, in which case the Striker then started taking over. I'm a big fan of the Striker and just being up close and personal. Um, and it's just relying on all of your guns. Uh, believe it or not, I'm not the biggest fan of the Vindicator, um, but this is true to my personal play style of most games. Like, I just don't... I'm not like the biggest summoner class type of player. They're fun, don't get me wrong. They can do some really cool things. Um, with where the Vindicator is at now, we don't have a lot of those tools to activate this style of play. Um, you have mostly uh, just the one drone type who's fighting for you and that's basically it. Um, and you know, I think that as the game continues on, there's gonna be some fun stuff that's added not only through the Vindicator's passives, but also through item synergies as well. Be it through set items, be it through modifiers you guys haven't seen yet. Ooh. Be it through devices that you guys haven't seen yet. Ooh. Shall I continue the tease? <laughs> but uh, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, put things together. 
shall I say. And uh, as of right now, like getting the ships out of the door uh, was our big priority for Zarkov uh, and being able to play as the Vindicator. And then from here, it's just gonna be adding content that's going to expand those opportunities. Where the shoot is this thing? Goodness gravy. I thought you could see it from the clouds. I thought this was gonna be a really quick... I think it's over here. Nope, that's not it. I thought that was it. Oh my goodness. The gas harvester, the sidetrack is real. I'm gonna have to go exploring in the darkness. I don't wanna do that right now. For the sake of keeping the story uh, paced out accordingly, I think I'm gonna just get back on track where the story is. Nope. We also need to go see a ship dealer or somebody to sell our equipment. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, unfortunately, so we're just going to bounce out. It would be great to have tools to be able to see through the clouds a little bit easier. Wouldn't that be dope? Wouldn't it? about in-game codex will we see it soon like in spring update or this situation in the same as with customization one yeah so the codex is a very low priority uh bills billman's files um unfortunately i will say um but there are other priorities that are i think the uh, you will agree are a bit more important than just uh, added information inside of the game um now for anybody who is not aware about the codex um let's have a very brief chat about this and everspace one uh whenever you were playing through the game you encountered enemy types you went to new locations you discovered something new it added it to your codex where you could read a little bit more give you a little bit of added information about the game world didn't necessarily provide any sort of added gameplay benefit like it wouldn't tell you the stats of enemy ships or anything like that um, it was a very standardized codex that just helped fill you in on the details of what's happening inside the game space now uh, as you can see on the screen right in front of me, we do have that intent in this version. We have a codex that says guides and tutorials, factions, corporations, conditions, systems, character, resources, the story so far in gallery. And there's also an incredibly important detail that says coming soon. That is incredibly misleading. It's incredibly misleading. Because at one point we wanted to flesh out a codex for Everspace 2. As of right now, we have gone from a low priority to potentially not planned, okay? I know that's going to make some people go, what? What? We're figuring this detail out, okay? We're still kind of talking about it internally, um, but I want you all to know that the focal point, the reason why this is even a, op like a thing that's being discussed at all is because there's a lot of content we still need to add to the game right? We still have a ton of items that you haven't seen. We have another playable ship. We have new devices. We have new um, attributes that are going to go all the way across items as well. I should say modifiers, not attributes. Modifiers going across all the items as well. We have um, tons of new stories. We have tons of new missions. Uh, there's going to be jobs. Like there's a lot of stuff there that we want to add to the game before we drop in little blurbs to the game, okay? So, just know that as of right now, this is not in a coming soon phase. This is in a going away phase. So this data tab will be remade accordingly whenever we get there, okay? So for all of those who have the expectation of having some like super crazy codex, um, don't have that expectation because it's going to be, it is not going to be hit whatsoever, okay? We had to readjust our focal point internally, 
Okay? So, that being said, that being said, um, you know, a lot of stuff can happen through development. I just want to be as transparent as possible so you guys know kind of what that's going to look like. Um, but as of right now, the codex is not planned, okay? I want to be super clear in that. If we get to it, it will be a bonus. If we get to it, it'll be a bonus. I personally would love a codex. So I'm not saying we don't care about it, because we really think it would be amazing. But we got other priorities, guys. And I hope you understand. All right, now we're diving back to Union. We're gonna be hunting down a couple more of these spatial bypass components. I see an interesting question that says, would there be any unique ships that need to be found through the series of puzzles? Uh, we don't have anything that's like that planned at the moment. A lot of the ships you're gonna be able to just find from shops, um, but the way that, um, we'll, we'll crack this, this open. Um, you know, you guys have noticed that there's different tiers to the ships, right? Um, and some of you said it would be really cool if we could upgrade a ship to a higher tier, right? Kind of like modifiers for items, except you can modify your entire ship. That feedback has been received. Thank you for that. We will see what else is in store for us in regards to that in the future. Uh, wait, was there a, is there a piece here? Do I need to go back for the piece here? I can't remember. Shoot, let me go in here real quick. Killer B Texas says an epic quest line to find a lost experimental ship design that once found you uh, would own would be cool as hell. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. There are still things to be added into the game space and reasons to do specific uh, exploration quests. So stay tuned. Good, good. I wonder what he's drinking, beer or wine. Oh, no, no, it's it's tears. Definitely tears. I, Tarjik. No, I'm on another business this time. Do you remember seeing an alien component like this one? A charred block with alien symbols. I was pointed in your direction. Maybe you recall this. Oh, yes. That I do have in my possession. Marita Wynn sold it to me some time ago. And now you want it? Yes, please. I would be willing to part with it in exchange for a small job. Arg, are you kidding me? I really don't have the time right now for more runarounds. Okay, point taken. It's yours for what I paid for it, plus storage and interest to offset inflation. That's actually very reasonable. Thank you, Target. Be on your way. Just never call me a time waster. Boom! <laughs> We know, so, like, the mission chain's already having you run around. We wanted to cut to the chase and make fun of it a little bit. So, uh, there you guys go. We're pretty happy with that one. And look, it's only 623 credits. That was incredibly straightforward. A stunning development in its simplicity. If only it was always like that. <laughs> All right. Let's get some clock. Oh, we need, a, we need to make some space. All right, here we go. Let's see. Uh, we still need super gel. That's what we need the power units for. Scrap metal. Okay, so that should have given us some space with a clock with a Kligon. Uh, that's what we need there. Beautiful. Now we just need scrap metal, more Kligon here. Wonderful! Hangar size has been increased to hold seven ships now. Um we might as well upgrade this because energy orbs are always a good thing. Uh, let's see. 
We still need those those power. Oh my goodness. I wish we had those power cell uh, the the things that I need. <laughs> I wish I had the things I need. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. Let's go ahead and use this. Uh, and we'll just dismantle that one. Uh, let's see. We can sell that. Sell that. Sell that. Get rid of that. What else we have? Oh my gosh, there's more. Uh, mine monsters will sell. Blaster could be fun. Ooh. I should have looked at my other weapons first. That coil gun could be great. Bypassing shield, increased damage if your ship is exposed to sunlight. Actually, we're going to dismantle this. We want some more crafting components, I think. Um, man, we have a ton of stuff. What's the power cell for? Power cell? Power cell? Power cell? Power cell. Okay. We might as well load this stuff in so that we are we have a little bit more space in our ship. And I, I really need to use these things. Actually, let's just sell them. They sell for a decent amount. Somebody just cried watching me do that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to sell those because they're 2k each and uh, we want to get back into the mission chain. All right. Oh my gosh, you're right. I need like, I need like 14 experience that I could have used that item instead of adapting it. Oh my goodness. Wow. That deserves, uh, that deserves one of these. Hang on a second. There we go. Yeah, definitely should have waited on that one. Oh well, what can you do? And that cloak on my soul. I know, right? Oh my gosh. Not the most optimized play. <laughs> energy orbs are so great when maxed out alts all the time. Yeah, generating alts from the energy orbs is, is huge. I should probably be building that out a little bit further. Let's see. There are more perks coming as well. I love how some of you guys are so crazy hoarders that you buy ships just to put more contents in the cargo. <laughs> and to all of my hoarder friends, let me tell you what. If this wasn't just a save game state for the stream, if it was my authentic game that I was playing, I would have a home base full of nine tier two plus bombers or heavyweights uh, rather to store as much stuff as I possibly could and everything would just be full of superiors. That's That would be the dream. That would be the absolute dream. Oh, also is this, did we update this? Uh... No, we did not update this yet. There's also an update coming to do some things. That was so specific, I've given away everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, not another hotfix. I was hoping you could help me. Let me see. Nope, we no longer have it. It already shipped out to Central Repository on Damaris Starport. 
What's that? Anything we have in stock that doesn't move is kept in storage until it is destroyed. Can't keep everything here. Could you help me track it down? I think I've already given you enough information. Can I see your GND credentials? Never mind. I'll ask on Don Marius myself. Alright, I'm going to give a little more clarity there. So, uh, Shuzen's also calling me out for saying some things that I shouldn't be saying today. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not crossing any lines. I hope. Um, uh, but no, so, uh, basically one of the things that we are going to be cleaning up is this information right here. So, um, let me, let me move my face and I'll just briefly talk about what you can expect, um, in, in a, just a little bit. Like, it's nothing crazy, okay? It's nothing crazy. But basically, like, this information down here regarding the ship speed, the handling, the track beam range, we want to make it a bit more consistent with the other information being shared. You'll notice that this is in a rectangle. This is in a rectangle. This is in a rectangle. Good job. Guess what this is? Look at this. What is that shape? Oh my gosh, there are rectangles everywhere. And then we have lines of text that go from left to right in a very long gap. Right? So it's like you read this and you read that. Are they connected? Are they disconnected? What's going on there? And we just kind of figured maybe uh, rectangles, right? Like, think about it. Rectangles. Just little updates like that. Just consistency. It's nothing crazy. Goodness. But yeah, just, just doing little things like that so that everything comes together uh, a bit more. So ship speed, handling, tractor beam range, that should be consolidated in an update uh, probably the next one uh, in the spring. But I'm not going to go into all the little details of stuff that you should be expecting because A, I can't. Uh, there's just too much. Uh, and two, I'm not allowed. So that's going to be your little tidbit today. Uh, it was not discussed at all. Oh no, I've revealed a portion of the game. Uh, but yeah, we want to make our UI more consistent. Go figure. That is in the works. Alright, let's go ahead and launch. Oh my gosh, they discovered rectangles. You caught us? Oh my goodness. How dare we? <laughs> Teaser of the day, rectangles. That's right. Oh my gosh. Hear me out. Rectangles. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hoarding does not make sense to me right now. Maybe once the end game establishes an economy. Pondering Fox, I just want to clap for you for a number of reasons. That makes so much sense to me. If I was in an early access game, personally, I would not go into hoard mode. I would go into, I want to try to break everything mode. Uh, I feel like if you're hoarding everything for a save wipe that's inevitable that we've stated, uh, that's just going to lead to refilling my cup here of, with more salty tears. Like, let's be real. Like, yeah, so I, I agree with you. I agree with you. But hoarding is fun, yes. And the right space, right? In the right space. Hoard components to upgrade perks. <laughs> you guys. We're just gonna have we're just gonna have a horde goblin companion. That every time you upgrade, it just it's continual upgrades. It just recently arrived on the spaceport in the latest G and B shipment. Here are the details. Yes and no. The item in question is expected to arrive today, but you are a little too early. All right, I'll try again later. All right, perfect. So this guy um, says that the products that we're looking for haven't arrived yet. Let's check this out. Hey, hi. What are the chances that the component Kala is looking for is on that freighter? I see no other log of a GNB cargo freighter from Prescott to Damaris in the last three months. In which case, this automated shipment must contain the item in question. Well, if I was good, I'd just wait till I stock and start negotiations. If I was good. Only now you bring morality into your decision making. Ah.
We need more loot anyway. Now we can use that equipment. Whoops. Man, we got some, uh, a little bit of a rundown in here. Let's go ahead and take out these enemies, get their goods. That wasn't so bad. Restored our drones even? That was just a win all around, honestly. That was just a win all around. Now wait a second. Did our, did we, did this bug out? Hold up. Now I have done this before, shamelessly. Normally you're able to pick up the bypass uh, right there. It, do, it, do we just create another bug? No, I got it. Wait, did I get it? No, I didn't get it. One, two, three, four. We did get it. Why did that not work? Bug report! Hans Christian, I know you're watching. <laughs> As a bug. Looks like we have it though. So now, is it is it seriously gonna say we have to? All right, let's go back. Let's see if we can fix the bug. Now normally, if you destroy the base, uh, destroy the base, destroy the ship, you can procure the goods that you're looking for instead of having to dock. Uh, but it seems that for some reason, uh, in this particular build that I'm running, which is a dev branch build, so it's possible that we could have broke something. And hopefully it's not broken in yours. That's what we get for the latest and the greatest. These showcases. But yeah, I don't see it. I don't see the item laying around. So uh, let's see what happens when we dock. Hi, could it be that the item I'm looking for arrived with the freighter that just <laughs> So docked? casual. Yes. The item just came and has already been scanned for inventory. It can be made available to you for a processing fee. Okay. How much is that, then? 20,000 credits. <laughs> what? That's a bit steep. The processing fee is non-negotiable. You have got to be kidding me. So, yeah, I guess that the ship must have docked uh, before I destroyed it, which is unfortunate. Because, yeah, I think the only way that I can collect it now is spending 20,000 credits, which we have, thankfully, so I can progress the story, but, uh, yikes! So we'll go ahead and buy it. Away, Robert. I've been fleeced. I hope this is worth it. I have already warned you about the unknown outcome of this folly. Kala better be sure about this. So, let me see. I have the component from Tarjik, the part from G and B and the part the outlaws took. That's the full shopping list. A collection of charred relics. I wonder what the strange alien can possibly make from these. Well, we're about to find out. Excellent. So that was the last one, thank goodness. Um, also, I want this. Oh, we already have it, that's fine. Uh, just sell a little bit of stuff back, so. Credits aren't terribly hard to come by in our game, though, so hopefully, uh, especially for you reporters out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, I did see a question. Real real quick observation. The shields in the upper right. So this is a wanted system. Um, this was also kind of a proof of concept back when Union was opened up. And I'm going to be real with you guys. We don't really like its implementation, uh, how it's currently in the game space. Uh, and we got a lot of feedback from you guys saying like, oh yeah, you know, it's it's a thing that exists. We agree, it definitely exists. Um, so there will be some modifications uh, in the future to that particular element of the game as well. 
So yeah. So, so that's what that is. And it's mostly bound to GNB and Okar because they are the two uh, greatest forces within the DMZ. And protecting each other is what they do. Oh, I love the Thunderbolts. Ah. See if there's any new designs that I could possibly tease. I don't think we've I don't think we've incorporated any new designs for the record. But if there is, I could accidentally show it. No, there's none. Unfortunately. Look at me trying to tease you with new stuff. Oh my gosh. All right. So now we've got all of these. We got all five of them. Yep. And it's time to head back. So here we go. Yeah, 20K. 20K. Also, one, one quick moment. Excellent. All is good. So we're gonna be ending the stream here pretty soon. And by pretty soon, I mean we got 37 minutes remaining. In a little bit, I wanna jump on over and highlight some of your all's fine work in the fan art and screenshot of our Discord. We like to highlight your guys' work because it's, uh, it's just cool. It's pretty neat. And there's one in particular I wanna show you guys um, because it makes me happy. And if it's made me happy, I wanna make you happy. You know. It should be called the Thunder Cougar Falcon Bird. <laughs> Check my key items. Wait, no, 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 we already did, we already did. For some reason I was thinking that was the fourth one and then I had to go get the fifth one elsewhere, but no, that was all of them. What happens if you do not have 20k? Do you have to earn it? Or you destroy the ship. Uh, but that's bugged right now, as you could see. But yeah. And we are just beelining it back to base. I do not have a pet chair, that's silly. I still have a chair sitting next to me because sometimes my wife will come down and watch whatever it is that I'm watching on the computer or, you know, hang out for any other reason. Can I have space in the office, know what I'm saying? All right, so we're almost back to base to which we will start the next process of our adventure. One where we had a couple of bugs collected, thanks Kaza. Uh, <laughs> which will be ironed out. If they're not ironed out in this build, it will be in a future build. I'm not even gonna tell you what the bug is because it breaks the game completely and it's not, it's not fun. But we're fixing things. you to show me what all this is about make rip in space go through you go fast i go home sounds promising i only hope it works indeed Will you two please finish your damn yibba yabba adam i've waited long enough we got a job to discuss now on the bridge yibba yabba okay all right maddox Back on base, the entire crew assemble on the bridge and Delia begins the meeting by introducing Kala. 
Kala thanks the crew for having her and Maddox takes the floor to finally brief the crew on his big job. Maddox explains that during the Acker War, he, Dax, and Eduardo stumbled upon a motherload of viridium. The three colleagues had to wait years to extract this rich find because the precious ore is embedded within a comet which only passes through on rare cycles. While Maddox speaks, Kala manipulates the travel routes and it becomes clear that she is a master navigator. Maddox is impressed that she found a shortcut to the comet location so quickly. Tarin interrupts the meeting to voice concern and claims the comet is sacred to the Akur and should not be touched. Uh -oh. Maddox is angry at alien superstitions but Tarin insists that a violation of the comet will re-spark all-out war between the Akur and the Colonials. Adam attempts to calm the quarrel and, considering the possible consequences, asks Maddox to wait on his operation until he can investigate Tarin's claims further. This infuriates Maddox, who says he has already waited too long. Adam gives his reasoning, based on evidence he saw on the lunar colony and a general foreboding and asks Tarin to speak to the commissioner with him about what he knows. Maddox is livid about being grounded, and about the fleet knowing his plans. Adam again appeals for calm and promises he is only on a fact-finding mission until more is known although he senses unrest among the crew. I can't believe you would have the nerve to ground me, Adam. You know what this job is worth. 15 damn years I've waited. Even if there's just a chance that Tarin is right, and mining this comet could provoke a war, we'd have millions of deaths on our heads. You have had me hanging on for too long. Well, you wouldn't have gotten this far without me, either. Think about that until I come back. We must hurry, Adam. Commissioner Hawk's current position is quite far away. Indeed. Adam, I have travel ready. You can be there fast. So, how does this work, Kala? It makes rep, between one place and another place. Yeah, you suggested as much before. Having inspected the technology myself, I can ascertain that it operates on some level of finding a matching resonance between two astrographic points, facilitating a joining of the two locations to momentarily appear. The mechanics, I am still trying to compute. If true, this could give us the edge. The only thing to do is try it out for myself. An untested technology, and you offer yourself as a guinea pig. This is insanity. The rip is safe. Nothing ever gets accomplished by not taking chances, hi. You trust too easily. All right, starting the emissary mission. And now what we have to do is do the spatial bypass by putting all of these components together. Fire it up, Kala. I'll radio you from the other side. Madness. The opening makes sparkles when you go through. Sounds fancy. Let's do it. Excellent. Also, this thing is amazing. I want to get this as soon as possible, but we need more power unit HX1s. We need power units for two different perks now. Oh my gosh. That's gonna be a problem. But uh, location scanner. So let's talk about that very briefly. What this thing does is it allows you to see the percentage of goods you found on the map. Uh, it did have some kinks in it. We've continued to iron through that to make sure it is proper. If anytime you see a percentage incorrect, I encourage you to fly there in whatever state your game is in and it should update. If it doesn't update, let us know and uh, maybe we'll have another hotfix, I don't know. But uh, rest assured, we want to get that tweaked out because the location scanner is a very important tool for you to see just how much stuff you've found. All right, otherwise, uh, let's see what else we could, oh, we could upgrade the hangar size almost again. We need over 20,000 credits. Huh. <clears throat> That's unfortunate. We do have scrap metal though. Upgrade our storage size, that's always nice. We have the Clygon, we'll do that. Wiring kit's perfect. We'll just invest. Invest! Super gel, we've got it! Oh my gosh, tractor beam level three! Wonderful. All right, I think we're gonna do all of that for now. Oh, it's some power cells, sure, why not? And then we are going to store all of our excess stuff because I have a hard time getting rid of this stuff. 
tech resources and ores and all that I don't like getting rid of. It's just the way that I play. Because I know in some degree, shape, or form, it's going to be required for uh, some level of perkitude. All right. Also, are we happy with our devices? Yeah, I actually am. I like this combination. So, very good. What's our other ship that we have in the, in the base? Oh, yeah, our nemesis. Yeah, I like that ship. I like the way that one looks. I'm really happy with the engines uh, paired with the wings on this. So they, it's like a matching set. But now we're gonna keep our cyclone and also save right here. Someone probably just looked at that and be like, wait, you can name saves? Yes, this is coming in an update. Uh, believe it or not, the implementation of that to the uh, Steam build is much more complicated than we would like it to be, which is why it hasn't been pushed into an update yet. So patience on that. You will be able to name saves in the future. So very good. All right. So from here, what I want to do is I want to jump over to some of your fan stuff uh, that you've created. But first, I must use the restroom. So what a great opportunity to talk about some other things. Uh, known as our social media. So uh, go ahead and hang out on the screen where you can see our Discord, our Twitch, our Twitter, our YouTube, um, all of the things where you can follow us for more information anytime, all the time. Uh, we are pretty active in the Discord. We'll respond to questions that pop up basically all the time. It is a good time. We also highlight screenshots of yours on our Instagram as well. So be sure to follow over there for a massive collection of sheer bliss in regards to desktop wallpaper. All right, guys, I'll be right back. Just one moment or two and we will get into your screenshots. I don't know why that was so delayed. All right. Now we're going into our screenshot segment uh, where we just talk about how awesome you guys are. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. So then we'll also continue ask, answering questions. Oh, whoops. Why did that pop away? You come back here now. Uh, we'll continue to answer questions uh, that pop up. So no worries if I miss something. Um, and if by the end of the stream, your question's still not answered, um, I do highly encourage you to head on over to our Discord. That was one of the links. I'll show the links again. Um, but you can always ask dev questions in that appropriate channel that we can iron out. Also use the forums. Uh, if you have any sort of observations, comments, suggestions to the game, um, we are, that's where we catalog everything. So if you have a suggestion and you're like, oh, hey, you should do this to the game because it feels like it's off and you send it in the chat here, that's completely missed. I'm just gonna straight up tell you that. Like it's gonna be completely like out in the void, won't be cataloged accordingly. So if you want your feedback to matter, 
catalog it for us, place it on the forums, then we can probably do something about it. At the very least, respond to you and say, this idea is awesome, this idea sucks, etc. All right? So you know where we're at with where you're at. Yes, perfect. So, Bivage. Bivage, he has been posting a number of screenshots in the Discord, and uh, this is one that I felt like was a pretty solid capture of uh, just the fun that he was having, bringing down these redeemers throughout the Kait Nebula. And uh, it just, I really, but the smoke trails feel really good. They're definitely not bugged out at all whatsoever. Nope, not at all. Um, but no, when, when they are being destroyed properly, when they're being destroyed in the, in the most authentic way, why did you do that again? You stay on the screen, please. Um, the, the smoke trails and the fire, I don't know. It feels righteous to me. So great shot, Vivage. I love the uh, foreground to background uh, brightness as well. Next, we got C. Dutson, who's been doing a lot of streaming of Everspace 2. He's been cataloging some of his adventures, which have been yikes. Woo! This is an Athorian worm. Whenever you are delving into the depths of the Kite Nebula, these things can be brutal. Just having a quick little look at their body mass. Uh, not only are they massive, but uh, they're slimy as well. Definitely want to steer clear of these bad boys because uh, they do damage while they're latched onto you. And if you get too close to them, they will start chomping on your ship and it does additional damage to boot. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, I've not been scrolling through the questions, so let me make sure that's still going. Cool. Next up, we've got another one from C. Dutson. Uh, this was his little adventure into Kite Nebula. Finding the Leviathan bones for the first time. Um, and, you know, a number of you guys have been taking photos of the Leviathan bones. And, um, yeah, they're all been, they've been coming through pretty well. The thought of a creature this large in the game uh, is pretty, pretty sick. Knowing that's, that's something that could be, uh, you know, in the future. <clears throat> as I smile joyfully <laughs> towards you all. <laughs> uh, but a uh, great little shot. It's also showing all the colors, the vibrancies within the Kite Nebula. And you've got these greens over here meshing, in, meshing into the blues, purples, pinks, uh, you know, as it goes around. It's pretty, I like it. These are all my choices, by the way, if anybody's curious. I just went through and I thought, oh, this, this is pretty, this is nice. We also have Kaz Kaz who takes a lot of pleasant photos. Um, I'm a big fan of the jellies. I really like these guys. I think they're adorable. And this one captures the jellies pretty well, pretty authentically. I think he was aiming to get the sun in the exact center point of the shot, and uh, I think he probably nailed it. I love how it makes the jellies look like they're in this circle just moving around. Um, so, nice shot from Cuz Cuz. Cuz Cuz also took another shot that was on the canyon side, and uh, yeah, Nothing really crazy here, just showing a nice pleasant stroll on the side of a canyon with, you know, a heart-shaped uh, rock formation in the middle, which just shows how much he loves us. We appreciate you. So thank you for that. What a delight. What a delight. Next, we got a number from Drive Live, who has been having a lot of fun in the game space. Uh, this is actually in one of the hangers. <laughs> I love this. I love how silly you guys go for just whatever shot you can find. Uh, but yeah, we actually did some detail work on a ladder and like this little machine uh, to drive around uh, to get to high points, get these canisters. Yep, uh, so that's clever shot. Definitely feels good. <laughs> very, very good attention to detail from Drive Live there. Uh, another one, um, I, I like this one. It's just incredibly foreboding. Um, I can't pin which type of ship this is. It might be an interceptor, I think, maybe. Not 100% sure, but uh, I just, I love that depth of field. Looking onward into the shattered planetoid, not quite knowing what's gonna happen next, but just being an onlooker in this vast amount of space, who knows what, will assail you around the corner. Mm. 
delicious. All right, this next one from uh, Drive Live should be a video. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. So, um, so enjoy. Uh, hang on a second. I need to mute this. There we go. And now enjoy. Hey Adam, you need some assistance? Sure. Why not? Working as intended, guys. Working as 100%. Pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks for that. <laughs> definitely love, whoops. Definitely loving uh, the stuff that you guys submit. Um, we'll try to fix it. <laughs> Why is it always the bosses that show up in the high risk locations that just have the wonkiest things happen to them from a physical standpoint? Oh my goodness. That is just wild. But it is what it is. So thank you for that drive life. And rest assured, we will work on that. Next one comes from Excel and his more scenic routes that he generally takes. I think this shot deserves a lot more credit than uh, than what you guys gave it in emoji responses. Because look at that engine trail. Look at that sweet engine trail. That That's a maneuver and a half, isn't it? I almost wonder if he had like his inertia dampeners off and then he like spun around by turning them on last minute and just did this super cool thing. But those engine trails, man, I dig that so much. It just makes my love of the Scout just raise up in its speed, its mobility, even though the Vanguard's better now. Oh, but still, what a great, what a great shot. Real, real good. Oh, you think that one's fixed already? Was that one of, of the elements in our hotfix? <laughs> Goodness gravy. I didn't think we fixed that in the hotfix, but okay. Maybe it is. But very, very good maneuvering. Uh, next on, he does just kind of a, a... I love the colors of this. Like, dang, that's hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at that Vindicator. The, the reds on it paired with the plant, like the moon. And the heat, oh my gosh, it's just like on fire. I dig this a great amount. In fact, I'm putting this in my uh, my screenshots uh, folder for potential desktop usage. Very, very great shot. This could be one that I could see us using in uh, like a little promotional material. I probably shouldn't say that. Maybe Michael will tell me, no, it's it's really dumb for certain reasons. I don't know, whatever. But I love it. I love this shot. I think the angle is beautiful. I actually misspoke. Michael probably wouldn't say something like that. Uh, <laughs> he would say, oh, yes, it's great in this regard and great in that other thing, because he's a man who gives praise accordingly. Uh, but uh, his eye and my eye uh, don't see eye to eye because he's the professional, and uh, I just pretend in some cases. Excellent. Glad we got that out of the way. Next up, we've got, uh, oh, Michael says, no, it's great. Hands down. Perfect. Like I said, I am so good at recognizing these details. Uh, you know, no big deal. <laughs> Excellent. But I love this shot. I think it came out really well. So kudos to you, Excel. Really, really good. Uh, next up is the Vindicator with the upgraded drone. So this was, uh, this was uh, taken after the hotfix uh, with those drones. I like this formation he has too with the five underneath and the one above. Um, also just using it from that uh, alignment, the, the symmetry of this is wowzers. I love it so much. Very, very cool. Very, very cool. I love how it comes together. Mm. Delicious. So great work, Excel. I'm looking forward to a mini more shot that you take because I feel like every time you take a shot, I'm just, I just sit there for a moment going, I like this. <laughs> so keep it up. Oh my gosh, the music's muted. Get back in here, music. There we go. There we go. All right, next we've got Flory2931. And I think the, uh, yep, it's gonna hiccup. Of course it's gonna hiccup. Perfect. 
Flory does a great job with capturing the environments of Everspace 2. Um, and I think this one also... It's like, from a gameplay standpoint, there's like nothing here, right? It's like, this is just a rock, right? But... The angle of this rock, with the light hitting it just this way, with the like the coloration of the rock, you've got the blues and the orange, which is a nice complementary color situation. Um, it speaks to me, okay? Like I really like this. It's just it's a sound composition. It it <clears throat> it, it rocks. All right, let's keep going. We've got this one that comes out of Geometry Prime, and uh, needless to say, Geometry does a fantastic job with his colors as well. Um, and uh, he's also another individual who's been posting um, where when you're going through the Discord and you're going through the screenshots, it's just, it's so cool the way that he composes each and every one uh, of the angles, of the, the depth of field, of the you know engine trails, whatever. And he's always kind of up close and personal with you. Uh, this next one as well is a solid example of, of what he's into. Like this one tastes like Skittles right here, right? We're, I mean, we're getting a taste of all the colors. It's fantastic. Um, and I love the uh, sheer aggression in it too. It's like just up close in the face of this bomber. And uh, just, oh man, I just love the way that it all comes together. So big shout out to Geometry Prime. Love the stuff that you've been pushing in. Very, very good. Now, um, I've seen a couple more of you guys uh, in the the YouTube and, and Twitter, uh, uh, Twitch, excuse me. Um, and I want to highlight a couple more of you guys as well. So like Golem, for example. Um, this is more in line with the engine trail issues that we were having. And he took a number of these. There's some that are super jank, a little too jank that I would like to show. <laughs> but I love the way that this came through. I love the way that this came through. Um, because it just looks so chaotic. And in a way, I kind of wish this still did exist in the game, but for a number of very important reasons, <clears throat> we do have to iron out some of the issues that this is creating. But still, it's still awesome. Still love the way that the, the trails came out. It does look organic in a way where it's just like spinning in space. Oh my gosh. Just... I dig it so much. So very good stuff. And again, Golem has a number of photos of this situation. So if you want to see it even crazier, all the more reason to get in the Discord. Go through those screenshots. It's a pretty crazy ride, what some people capture. All right, next up, we've got Kazaa. He always takes some pretty memorable photos. Uh, this one's actually right at the start of when we dropped the Kite Nebula, uh, either the experimental branch or the full thing. I think it might've even just been the experimental and he just immediately was diving in, literally, to these planet-side locations. Um, or uh, this one's not a planet-side location, this is inside an asteroid. But he wanted to know what was lurking in those depths and started taking photos and just, I love it. This photo shows that initial curiosity that I had whenever we were still in a developmental phase of what we were adding to Kite Nebula. And I just wanna know what's around that corner. It's like, I, I want to know what's down this pathway. And it just really stuck out to me. Because uh, you always capture my imagination in your shots as well. Just, I love it. I dig it so much. Speaking of which, um, we do need to talk about your use of mining lasers, however. Um, there, we got a report from management. Um, and, <laughs> goodness you, how devious. How devious is that? Now, a number of you guys were also playing around with the mining lasers, and you can have a lot of fun with them. So, uh, it's one of those cases where I'm not even mad, I'm impressed. So, well done, well played. That's good, that's good. Pretty clever tactic there. <laughs> All right, and then finally from Kazaa, and he also, actually, I've got two more. I got two more from Kazaa, I'm giving him a lot of love, but, uh, he also submits a lot of incredible screenshots, so definitely uh, have a look on Discord as well for him. But this one, you actually saw me doing this in the stream, but he captures this just in its moment. I just want to sit back, let you see that full photo realized. Um, dang. 
I truly dig the colorations on your ship there. And I also see that you are using the um, <clears throat> bonus features of our customization, uh, which I believe is going to be fixed soon. Maybe. I thought it was fixed in the, the hot fix. Maybe it wasn't. I'm not sure. All I know is that I'm out of tears. That's fine. <clears throat> but uh, just a great shot. Super action. This is one that I've put into my screenshot folder as well to randomly, randomly add to my desktop wallpaper. So very, very good stuff. All right, I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit because i got eight minutes left. This last one from Kazaa. Um, I wanted to throw this in as kind of like just a, a shout out to the old drones of the Vindicator. Um, also just a nice, this is a, this captures a lot of what the Kite Nebula update is uh, showing. You know, it's like we, we added the Vindicator, the drones, the ancient wardens uh, flying about in the sectors were in the Kite Nebula itself. Um, I love this. It's, it's the, <laughs> the, oh my gosh. I, I didn't pull it over the fan art of showing the uh, the Lord of the Rings reference, you know, the, the, un, the all seeing eye, right? Beautiful. But these were the old drones. Some people are really attached to them, apparently, I found out. Um, but they were made to, to look a little bit more makeshift uh, intentionally. And we uh, just generally, they were placeholders. They're very much placeholders. That's why they were updated. Um, but we'll see what happens in the future. We'll see what happens in the future. All right, next, we've got some attention to premium nose. Premium Nose takes these much more wide-angled shots, and they're gorgeous. Um, if I had um, multiple monitors, like if I had like three or four or something like that, I would do these just like spin it all the way across and stuff like that, because I just love how they turn out. Very, very good stuff. Um, and yeah, just... It's kind of interesting, too, because, like, as I'm playing the game, maybe you guys are like this, too, but as I'm playing the game and you're all up inside of all of the asteroids and the, the, the debris fields and all that type of stuff, the game can kind of start feeling a little bit small. But when you take a step back, like, when you zoom out and you look around at the size of these locations, like, they're, they are expansive. They are not just these tiny little blips on the map. Like, there's a... There's a pretty large chunk of stuff to do and fly around and I think that uh, premium nose captures that in a lot of his shots like you can see just how much stuff is actually there so big shout out to premium nose for that very very good we had a couple from salt can as well and I just want to highlight this one because it's so cool just a damaged blood starship trying to get get away try to survive um and I just love that depth of field. I love the colors. It all comes together. I dig it a lot. I dig it a lot. So great shot, Salt Can. He's got a number of other shots as well. Supplied over on the Discord too. So good, good stuff. Next we have one from Salupsis, I believe is how to pronounce the username. Salupsis. Salupsis. And I like the way they colored their ship here. I really dig it. The purple, the orange, the black, it kind of works. It kind of works, especially when you look at the scene itself and you see that there's purple, there's orange, there's dark tones. And so it meshes pretty well together. I also like this location and uh, with the depth of field, it kind of makes you wonder what all is going on at this site and, uh, you know, Considering Kite Nebula is putting a lot of emphasis in exploration and, and trying to uh, experience the wildlife and, and everything going on, it, it's quite delightful. So great take on that, Salupsis. They also have another a number of other shots as well, uh, which you should all check. I keep going back to the Discord. These are all posted on our Discord, and then we highlight you guys on Instagram. So if you want more of this type of stuff, you should definitely head over to our Discord, head over to our Instagram, because we, we just give you guys a lot of love. That's what it's designed for. Oh my gosh. So next up, we've got Spoot Knight, who also takes uh, some really impressive photos as well. So shout out to Spoot Knight for your takes. Uh, this one just showing the size of this asteroid um, next to the floating cathedral, citadel, whatever this thing is, this ancient structure. Good, good stuff. 
Another one from Spoot Night, a little bit spoilery, but I dig it. Got the release at this site. I'll try not to spoil too much else since I've already given enough. Good, good stuff. One more from Spoot Night. makes you wonder what's down there. I think his comment in Discord was, uh, it'd be a shame if you flew down into this depths and the pressure like crushed your ship or something like that. We can't go too hyper-realistic. That does sound pretty neat though. Just great angles, great shots. And I love the, the paint scheme on this too. That's a pretty good looking scout. Pretty good looking scout. I love this, says Shu. Yeah, no, I, I really do. I really like this one too. It's uh, It comes together incredibly well. Just that sense of wonder, right? Like what's down there? I need to know more. Like a lot of the shots that I choose, there's a, it's either bright flashy colors and I'm like, ooh, or it's invoking some level of curiosity for me. That's kind of how I tend to pick your shots and uh, I love it. I just love it so much. Next up, we have the Chemical Bro. Chemical Bro posts a lot, and he's got uh, some, he's got a clever taste for uh, bringing shots together. Now, this one's a vertical one. It's not ideal for showcasing on the stream, but um, I just love how he's got both the Hydras as well as the Jellies in the same shot. Um, and uh, it just, it's great. Also, um, uh, scientists believe that these hydras have some form of space peanut butter, um, so potential combination there in the future, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Next up, we got this one also from the Chemical Bro. <laughs> Just the alignment of the circles. What a clever man. What a clever man. Love how you brought it all together. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Yeah, that last one. Yeah, this one's uh, called From the Depths. Yep. Yeah, he names his shots too. I, I dig that as well. All right. So now we're going to move into the last screenshot. And then we've got a couple of fan art pieces to go through. Uh, this one is actually from the start of early access. Look at that number. Oh my gosh. Look at that. The clean shot of the Okar. This comes from WDNMD. Uh, really love how it comes together. Just, I dig it. I dig it, I need more. And then next up, we've got this series of fan art uh, where he bought, I think they're called snip ships. I think, it's, I think that's the term, Deshra, is that right? And he's been remaking Everspace 2 ships using this modular toy system. Uh, and here are some of the results. We've got an interceptor here. Snapships. Thank you. Snapships. He's got an interceptor here. He's got a striker here. You know, each, each of these like little components and stuff like pop off and get replaced. Like you can even see the different engine types. Like engine types that we have in our game. He's like using similar ones. Right? The wing, here's the striker. Then he also made a bomber. <laughs> like, look at this guy. Look at this guy. And then we also have a sentinel, the forward swept wings. Doing all sorts of crazy fun stuff with them. Uh, pretty neat. All things considered, uh, you know, that these pieces and parts from this Snap Ships product or whatever uh, are com like meant for completely different builds and whatnot. The fact that he can get even close to some of the ships in Everspace 2. I think that's remarkable. So uh, major shout out to Deshra for just having fun on that. Uh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. And uh, and inevitably so somebody's gonna ask like, oh, well is Everspace gonna do anything like this? Can we buy Everspace ships that are like modularly built? Like hold your horses there. Would that be cool? Yes. Uh, 
I just explained earlier that we are dropping our codex, right? Like we've we got to make some pretty intense calls for something that would be like this if we would do something like that. So I would keep your expectations low or no uh, for doing something like that. This is cool. Yes, we think it's cool. Yes, uh, but it is unfortunately not where our focus is at. All right, next up, we've got Drive Live providing the owner's quick start guide for the Striker step-by-step -step maintenance and repair. I love it. Thank you so much for this. Having a lot of fun. You guys are the best. So much fun. I want to see more of this type of stuff. It just makes it makes me so happy. Uh, so thank you for putting that together, Drive Live. Uh, big shout out to you. And then the final one. Uh, with our time that we have together is the chemical bro who loves his reflections so much ordered this and just made it gorgeous guys i'm over time my wife has to go pick up my children from school so i actually have got to go so i'm going to kind of cut the stream off like right the heck now you guys have been awesome i have been eric schrader your community ambassador for all things everspace 2 related don't stop being awesome and we will catch you in the next stream Toodles! I am absolutely positive I missed a question or two or 10 and a lot of talking today and a lot of showcasing today. So if I missed your question, it's not because I don't love you. It's because I was doing a stream. So by all means, head on over to the Discord, find our Ask Dev Questions channel, plop it in there, and you will get a response from me, a member of the community, someone else from Rockfish Games, but we are gonna treat you right to make sure all questions go un, uh, completely answered, not unanswered, goodness, the opposite. Woo, all right, I'm out. Thank you.